Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Amen. Well, 1 Samuel chapter 3, developing spiritual sensitivity. We're going to read um, the first 24 verses of this chapter, which is the entire chapter. There's nothing after the 21st verse. And the child Samuel, remember who Samuel was. Remember his mother had prayed and asked God for a child. God gave him a child and said, if you give me a child, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have him and, get, and, and give him to you. She had a child and got a certain age. She brought him to the temple and gave him to Samuel to bring up in the temple. And, I mean, to Eli and brought him to the temple. And he was being brought up in the temple. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. That means he did work in the temple. And, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days and there was no open vision. Wow. Now, precious meaning it was rare. The word, the word precious meant rare. The word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no open vision. I mean, there was, there was a, uh, uh, a damper on the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. Think about that. And what, what, did, how, what brings that? A lethargicness in the kingdom will bring a dampering to the manifestations of the Spirit of God. Now, we know that Eli and his boys weren't really swift. Now, we'll get further in this chapter. Eli's sons were molesting the women at the the gate to the temple, taking advantage of them. And Eli didn't stop them because they were his sons. They had been anybody else. He'd he'd, 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 uh, drawn and courted them. But because they were his kids, they got away with it. And it came to, so uh, that that brought a a, a, uh, drought, as it were, of the manifestations of the Spirit. Think about it. No open vision. Think about God not speaking. You ever, you ever been in a season where God, it just didn't seem like God was speaking? America, 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 wake up. Now, we've had some parts of the church praying and asking God to heal our land. Other parts of the church are running right along with the devil. Just, just whatever he wants, they're hooking up with him and running with him. And they're wondering why things are happening in our country. I mean, I went, I went to food line the other day. And got the food line gallon of milk. It was $4.18 for a gallon. I mean, I mean, I usually look down there and try to find, you know, you, the, the, the store brand's way cheaper than Pet or Mayola or whoever. And I saw food line four. I said, what? It's all happening in our country. The longest stretch in the history of, of gasoline over $3 a gallon. It's, it keeps right on going, you know. Things are happening in our country, and people aren't hearing the word of the Lord. They're hearing cute things. They're hearing false doctrines. They're hearing every wind and wave of doctrine that's flowing through the planet. You know, and you know, and and there's there's, there's things where when people speak the things of God, people aren't even listening. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the word of the Lord. Are you here? You're going home. You know, we got we got preachers saying that if if you preach that God judges individuals or nations, you're sick. I'm talking about world recognized, world-promoted preachers in the biggest churches in America saying that if you preach God judges individuals or nations, you're sick and need help. Okay? That's why we need spiritual discernment. <laughs> Didn't we read last week how they, you know, why we need it is in the last days perilous times will come. Amen? Why? Because men, men will be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And when you love pleasures more than love God, there won't be open visions. There won't be demonstrations of the Spirit to speak into people's lives. It'll, be, it'll, it'll fall silent. Amen. We have to have our burning and a yearning for the things of God once again. We have to have a yearning for the voice of God. And I'm not talking about overriding the written word. I'm talking about people speaking by prophetic utterance of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Speaking under the anointing of the Spirit. Declaring the counsel of God. And it coming out of the living word of God. And it transforming lives. Can you say Amen. And it came to pass when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. He's going blind. And there the lamp of God, oh man, there's so many symbolisms here, went out in the temple of the Lord. When the ministers become dull of seeing, 
when they become spiritually blind to the, void, to the things of God, that the light will go out in the temple in the hearts of men and women. We are in a difficult place when that happens. When the ministers only tell you what you want to hear and people clamor to get to that meeting where they're going to get told what they want to hear. When they can be told that they can do whatever they want to do. When they're told that they can live however they want to live and it doesn't matter. And just throw a nice big offering in here or even in this, pay to come to my meeting. Got ministers going in the Coliseums and you pay charging you $25 or $50 to go to the meeting. Right. Well, we got to pay for the Coliseum. Faith! Well, you put 70,000 people in a meeting at $50 a head, it won't take long to have a lot of money. Amen. Well, they do it at football. This ain't a football game. Amen. This isn't a spectator event. This is the church of the living God. We come in commitment to the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We are here in obedience to the words of God Almighty. Amen. To forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as is the manner of some. We come to be matured and trained and developed in the things of God. We don't come to be entertained and to pay an entertainment fee. Your tithe is not an entertainment fee. It is the command of God so there'll be meat in the house of God to sustain it so we can do the work of God in the earth. I want to know how many of you would like to be in Iraq right now with the, up north where the Kurds are, where they're beheading Christians. How many would still stay in your faith? Or stay home because you're under grace and it don't matter what you do. Yeah, Janice, go ahead on. Ha, ha. And there the lamp of God went out in the temple of God, of the Lord, where the Ark of the Covenant was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. And the Lord called Samuel, he answered, here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called thee not. Lie down again. You know, it's like, can you hear a fog horn, leg horn? I say, I say, boy, you bother me, son, you bother me. Go lay down. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here am I, for thou didst call me. He answered, uh, I called thee not, my son. I say, boy, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither the word of the Lord yet uh, of the Lord yet revealed unto him. In other words, he's not trained in the things of God. Now I want to say something to you young ministers who think you know everything there is to know. You don't. And maybe you have a zeal and a fire for the things of God, and that's great. But there are those who have gone before who know something who could help you. Yeah. And don't you throw them out like you think that you know everything and they're just an old, old geek and they don't know nothing. I'm going to share something here. Samuel, if, you, if anybody was an old geek, it was Eli. Yeah. And he still was able to, to direct Samuel's path. Yeah. Yeah. He's blind, not even hearing, seeing things. The, the word of the Lord is precious. Uh, no open visions. Hello? Yeah. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time he arose, went to Eli, and he said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived. Even in this state, he could still, he still recognized God's doing something. That the Lord had called the child. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, thou shalt say, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called at his, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth, it shall tingle. Now, I'm going to tell you something. What he says he's going to do here is going to tingle some ears. Ain't none of this, you know, happy, clappy mess. Amen. It's none of this, you know, uh, you're at McDonald's, you can have it your way. Or no, Burger King. Burger King was have it your way. It was, it'll make your ears tingle because I'm, I'm telling you, when God, listen, God doesn't always speak what you want to hear. Hello? I, I dare say, if, you don't, if someone's a prophet and all they ever do is prophesy good and wonders, you might want to check their ministry out. Hello? I've shared this before. I'll share it again. In my ordination service with Raymond, now, I've been ordained in the ministry, but... 
the Lord spoke to me. He said, go back to your roots. And at that time, you know, uh, you know Ramah was changing some things. And, and uh, we had been ordained with Ramah. But it took us about three years to get back for a service while they were laying hands on the people. And Dad Hagen was laying hands on the people to be ordained into the ministry. And uh, because it had been, you know, it's just kind of one of those things where it was, they really started pushing that direction to have their minister's organization really strong and stuff. Um, when I graduated, they said, we don't ordain, go do, go do what you, you know, go hook up with somebody, be blessed, we love you, come back for alumni week. That's kind of, that's how they sent us out, you know. That was, that was 81. It was, and it wasn't, they didn't, they just didn't, they weren't doing that. Dad always drug his feet. He didn't do anything quick. When it was time, he would do it. If it wasn't, he didn't do it. No matter how many people were screaming in his ear. So we had about 700 couples getting ordained that night. You know, and I knew some of the ones that were at the front of the line. We were about 80 or 90 couples down the line. Hallelujah! I wanted to be up front until he started. You know, love it when the prophet prophesies, yeah, you'll, you'll change the world. But you hate it when he starts out and goes, you're hard-headed. You don't listen to your wife. You need to listen to your wife. She's been trying to speak to you. You wouldn't listen. Boom. And you went, whoo. And about the first five couples, all oh, they were the hard-headed. But he got, Lord got that bunch up there first. He kept prophesying about hard-headed men who wouldn't listen to their wife. They were sent by God to be helpmates in the ministry, and they wouldn't listen to them. And I'll tell you, I've never been so glad for him to get over into the spirit and just speak tongues. <laughs> he got certain going to be 10 or 15 couples down the line, and he went in the name. And he just, and I was going, whoa! <laughs> Whatever it is I need, Lord, I'll get it when he gets here. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> I, I'm probably going to take that hard-headed thing from all those, and you don't have to put it on tape. It was on tape. They were recording all that. Praise the Lord. We have it forever for posterity. Glory to God. <coughs> Hallelujah. And, they, they shall ting, and here if it will tingle, in that day I will perform against Eli all the things which I have spoken according to the, his house which I, when I began, and I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house. Hallelujah. God don't judge. Really? We're under grace. You better check your Bible out better. Are you here? You're going home. I will judge his house when I begin forever for the iniquity which he knoweth because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. Therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli and the iniquity of Eli's house shall not, shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. And Samuel lay unto the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. And Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here am I. He said, what is it the Lord has shown unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do to, so to thee, and more also, if you hide anything from me. Of all that he said unto you. And Samuel told him every whit, and he had nothing. He said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And all of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. So here, here we have the calling of Samuel and the establishing of Samuel to, to be a prophet before the things of God. And see, what we have here is we need to be spiritually sensitive. Let's look at the first one. Uh, the first thing is you got to minister unto the Lord. Remember, Samuel was ministering unto the Lord before, before the Lord in the temple for Eli. Remember that? Back, back up there in verse 1. Child ministered unto the Lord before Eli. Hallelujah. The Acts chapter 13, verse 2. We need to be ministering. Now, ministering to the Lord, we, we sometimes we limit the significance of that word to simply, we worship the Lord. Put on a, you know, a Hillsong's tape, run after it, now we're ministering unto the Lord, now God's going to speak to us. And, um, and, and, I, and actually, that word means, talk, means more about service than it does worship. That went over big. I said that means it has more to do with service than it does worship. We want to, you know, well, well, praise God, I'm going to put on a good worship tape and minister to the Lord. You know, God likes it when you worship him. Okay, I get that. But you know what? He likes it even better when you serve him. Yeah. Are y'all here or you gone home? 
I say he likes it even better when you serve. He likes it better when you go out and do what he, does, do what he says do. Did that sound right? Go out and do what he says do? Okay. Thought maybe I'm a little redundant do there. All right? He wants you to do. We got people praying about their ministry, and they won't go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Come on now. Y'all hear you go home. People want pulpit ministries, and they won't wash the, 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 uh, the toilets. They want worldwide evangelistic travel things, and they won't watch the babies. Woo, come on now. I was, if I was preaching on the blood, you'd be shouting by now. God has already called. We need to be serving the Lord. Yeah, but I'm, I'm called to do this, and I'm called. Let me tell you, I graduated from Raymond Bible Training Center, and I got the wonderful job of washing the toilets. Walking in the rain and keeping the rain off the, um, the pastor or his wife so they could get in the building and go minister from the pulpit and not look like they just got out of a swimming pool. Amen. I did, but they didn't. Come on now. We worked in the nurseries. We cleaned the church. We did it all. He'd go on vacation. I had to go feed his dog, his big mutt. Jump all over me. I mean, he'd be running around and dog do and then come jump on me. But you had to go back there and feed him. That was, that was, that, is that, that's beneath me. I wouldn't do that. That was service. You were, you were serving him so he could serve the Lord? Hello? You do what you got to do. We, we've got to get busy about the things of God. You know, well, I don't want to witness to anybody. That's not my forte. People need to go to heaven and not go to hell. Amen. Forget your forte. Hello? Can you imagine trying to explain to the Lord why you let your neighbor go to hell? It just wasn't my forte. Janice has got it going this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. As the child ministered until he wasn't worshiping the Lord. He was doing the service of the temple. He was going and making sure that this was full of oil and making sure this was this and doing all the things around the temple. That, that was his ministry. That is what he was ministering unto. That's how he was ministering unto the Lord. Amen? It can do with worship, but it's not limited to worship. Are you here? You, if, you mess, if you get that and only think it means worship, you're just sitting around, oh, I just worship the Lord. Now, David worshiped the Lord, but when the bear came, what did he do? He got up and went and killed the bear. When the lion came, what did he do? He got up and went and killed the lion. Then he came back and played his harp and sang. But he wasn't just, well, the lion came, oh, I'll just worship the Lord, and the Lord will take care of the little lamby. No, he had a responsibility, and he did his service. Amen. Now, I know when you say amen, that means that you're going to get committed, and so we want you to say a lot of amens because we want you to get committed. Amen. All right. Acts 13, 2, is a minister to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, set. now see, you can separate yourself in seeking the Lord. So like I said, it's not limited. It's not that it's that worship or, or seeking God is not in part of it, but it's not the whole here they minister to the Lord and fast, and the Holy Ghost said. There is not, there's not enough setting aside to focus on what God wants, what God desires, what God has, what his desires are. That's what Nathan was saying this morning. We have got to get back to the place that our lives are more about what he wants than what we want. Now, it's a good time for all of y'all to have your own personal bobblehead sitting right there in the seat. Come on now, bobblehead it for me. Yeah, I've got mine on my desk. I'll have to go get it and get my own amen corner going on over here. Amen. When they set aside and put God first, he spoke.
We have got to come back to the place where, you know, getting to the church to hear the, hear the sermons. I mean, God speaks through me to your life. I know some bows out there that don't think I do, but I don't care about them. You're here. Amen. God brought you here so I could speak to your life. Amen. You're here this morning for the Spirit of God in me to speak to you. Amen. Ed's not speaking to you. It's the, the anointing in me, the Holy Ghost. Right. He's speaking through me. Hallelujah. And see, when you come, you see, you've got to set aside and say that's more important than, than staying in bed and enjoying the drizzly rain that's out there. So that's just, you know what that is? That is your F-L-E-S-H, your flesh. Your flesh wanted to lay there. Mine did too. But I said it with, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. And I had to drag my flesh up. Say, get up from there, boy. Then I went back to my room and got me up. That was Nathan I was talking to first. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, we, we got we to say the things of God are more important than, you know, getting that extra hour of sleep on Wednesday night because I'm just going to skip church because it ain't that important. Yes, it is. Amen. Well, I didn't get anything out of it. Why didn't you bring something to it? Why don't you bring some prayer time? Why don't you bring some anointing that you got in your prayer closet and let it join together with everybody else so that when that hurting soul walks in the door, there is power enough to liberate and to set them free. Glory to God. Amen. Instead of them going in and being the first one here and the last one to leave. Amen. Or in some cases, when they're the first one here, they're, they're usually the first one to leave too. Where's the church members? Oh, they'll get here. They're running on CP time. Charismatic people time. See, y'all thought I was talking about something else. <laughs> Amen. Same result about 30 minutes to an hour later than normal. You got to get up and say, hey, I got to get to church to be there early. There might be somebody walking. There's somebody could come in the door this one that I'm going to be able to minister to. <coughs> Greeting or just walking through the hallway. See, Samuel was ministering unto the Lord before Eli. He wasn't going around the temple going, I love you, Lord. You're wonderful. You're great. He was running over there going, is there enough oil in the lamp? Is this done? Is that done? Hello? A number of years ago, Buddy Harrison, uh, uh, Kenneth Hagin's son-in-law, uh, he's gone, brother, brother Buddy's gone home to be with the Lord now. He, has, uh, he went home sometime in the 90s. Love Brother Buddy. Him and Sister Pat did a lot of things, did a lot of good. Started an organization called Faith Christian Fellowship International. And, um, and back in those days, all the guys who graduated from Raymond, the girls, uh, they, when they went to get to Ordain, they went to Buddy's place because Raymond didn't ordain. And Buddy was a pastor to pastors, and a pastor to ministers. Hallelujah. And, uh, and, and that's where a lot of the, the, the training on, the, on what we call the ministry helps came from. Buddy Bell was his ministry helps, and Buddy still travels and teaches on ministry of helps. And, um, you know, on, on having excellence in your, work, in your workers and your departments and your staff, you know. And um, they had a lady at, at church who, who was a greeter. What she didn't know was when, that, when the Spirit of God spoke to her that morning and said, I want you to dance with the next person that walks through the door, she didn't know the backstory. There was a lady coming across the parking lot who had been listening to Brother Buddy on the radio for weeks, and she was all but bedridden. She could, be, she could get herself up and get out extremely limited, dealing with some physical problems. And she, and she got to hearing Brother, Buddy, pre, Brother B, 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 Buddy Harrison preach on the radio there in Tulsa. And she kept hearing him and kept listening to his ministry. And faith, see, it, it wasn't faith at first, it was hope. Yeah. See, that expectancy, the hope that there's an answer. So you got to give people the hope that there's an answer before they can get faith to get the answer. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. They've got to hear something that puts a hope in their heart that they can come back and add the action of faith to and get the answer. And she got to hear Brother Buddy preach about God, Jesus healed and Jesus ministered. And, you know, they would pray for the sick and they'd get healed. And she got a hope in her heart that she could be well from that ailment she was dealing with. And so she began to say, next Sunday I'm going to church. 
and I'm going to have him lay hands on me, and I'm going to get healed in Jesus' name. And she said that all week. What's she doing now? Now she's beginning to add faith to the hope, praise God. And then she acted. She got in her car and drove herself to church, drove up in the parking lot and got out of her car, started working her way across the parking lot, and while she did, the Holy Ghost came on the greeter. Said, I want you to dance with the next person that walks through the door. Guess who the next person to walk through that door was? It was that woman. And she opened the door, and that greeter grabbed her and said, Whoa! She got instantly healed. Never got in the prayer line because she was already well. She got to go in and sit down and enjoy the service healed. See, if we'll get back to serving the Lord, maybe you are the greeter this morning. But I need for you to be a Holy Ghost greeter. I need for you to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying. He might just say, grab him and give him a great big hug and say, God loves you, honey. We used to have a, certain church, a woman back in our church in Greenville, Sister Eagle. Uh, she went home to be the Lord a number of years ago. But I mean, you say, Sister, you say, hey, Sister Eagle. She said, God love you. She was a northerner. Now, that's, that's how I cut. But, you know, southerners talk different than northerners. Because she she, she, we would say, oh, Lord, bless your heart. In the South. She said, God love you, honey. Her little northern accent. Hallelujah. She loved the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, you know, just, you might need to tell somebody God loves you. That might, and that might be the word they needed to set them free. We need Holy Ghost greeters. We need Holy Ghost nursery workers. You got them babies in there. You don't know what kind of households. I don't know why I'm over here. We're just going to go over here, okay? Do you mind? Doesn't matter, I'm going to do it anyway because I'm going to obey him, not you. Amen. Them babies might be in there in your care, in your charge, one time every other month that you're actually in the nursery and I, you've got an opportunity to lay hands on them and pray over them in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and make deposits by the Spirit of the living God, hallelujah, that will never leave them. They may, end, and those people, listen, I'm telling you right now, they may leave and they may leave this church or they may go somewhere else and they may grow up in the worst place in the world. But I will tell you that the contact and, the, and those interactions they have with somebody full of God Amen. does not leave them. I remember a few years ago, Janie had got over to GTCC to help, I think Jesse get signed up for a class. She was trying to take a summer school class, kind of get, you know, something out of the way. You know, something, let me tell you, if you're smart and you're in, you're in a four-year college and it's tight, go to GTCC and take a summer school course that will transfer and get that out of the way in the summer. Well, I want my summer. It's a whole lot better than doing it during semester when you've got 18 other hours going on. And so he's, they, they come out of the room and, they, and all of a sudden someone down the hallway goes, Miss Janie! Well, last time we saw him, he was about this tall. His mother had passed away. Diana had passed away. One of the hardest things I ever had to do in my life was go tell that boy his mama was dead. The family didn't want to do it. They sent the pastor out to do it. That was a hard thing to do. I just want you to know that. To tell a child your mama's gone. <clears throat> but this church had prayed over him. This church had, he had heard the word of the Lord here. He had been ministered to. Hallelujah. And when he saw her, it was Miss Jane. He was, he was up here. He's looking down at her. Last time he was looking up at her. The family took him somewhere else. He went and they, they took him to where they were going and stuff and, you know, took him out of the church where they were going. But that's okay. Because there was a deposit made by the Spirit. Now we're friends with him on Facebook. He says he's got to come see us. He's, you know, he, he's, he's doing well and, and things are good, going good for him. But he, that contact in his heart... Let me tell you something, folks. I remember when I was a young boy, I was a Pentecostal boy. I wasn't saved, but yeah, every Wednesday night or every Sunday night, minimum Sunday night. And if they had a chance, every Wednesday night, you had to come to the altar. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, in the next church we have, I want to have a place we, we actually go kneel at and call an altar. Amen. Well, that's kind of old-fashioned. We need some old-fashioned getting at the altar and seeking the face of God time. And I remember old brother Paramore. At that time, he was old. I mean, he, dirt was new compared to him. Now, I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just trying to let you know. He, he, he was an older man who came out of early Pentecost. And those old saints who had been children in the beginnings of Pentecost 
and sat under the founders of Pentecost. And those men and women had prayed over them. They learned to pray in the presence of saints of God who birthed the revival of Pentecostalism in the early 1900s. And they lay their hands on you. Oh, God. And they just say, God, and you feel the, the charge in the atmosphere. Use this man, young man, for your glory. And they just pray things down over you, and you're saying, no, 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 I'm running, I'm, you know. But you get out in life in the words of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come down on your soul. You hear him in the quiet times. You hear the prayers of those saints as they prayed over you. And the Holy Ghost come on you. And all they were was, they weren't even a deacon in the church. They were just an elder, statesman, an old saint ministering unto the Lord by praying over young people. We, we would look at each other and try to catch and giggle a little bit and all felt awkward. But there's something about God, about his spirit coming on you. That no matter where you run and no matter how hard you try to hide and how much you try to rid yourself of that recognition that his presence is real, you just can't do it. And it's all because people were ministering unto the Lord. They were serving God. Hallelujah. And the power and the presence of God chases you everywhere you go. So one day you begin to pick up your Bible and read. Now, I don't know if I would recommend people. I just started reading Revelation. Now, don't get offended when I say this. That will scare the hell out of you. It got it out of me. I don't want to tell you the truth. Because I heard enough sermons on Revelation, on what was going to happen, about all the rocks falling on you, on the mark of the beast, on the 666 in your forehead, and all that stuff. And my God, after four times through, I was like, get me to a church. The night I got saved, I went to church on Wednesday night on, on July the 11th, 1979, and um, the pastor, the, the minister was ministering, Pastor Jesus was out of town, this guy was a, a supply pastor for our denomination, he since left and went to the Church of Christ, because uh, he, he, he always complained about everything. I heard, I don't even remember what he preached on. I didn't come to hear him preach, I come to get to the altar man and get saved. And as soon as he got done, he thinks his sermon got me down there. Bless his heart. I don't even know what he said. If he, had been at the, if he had been at the closing when I came in, I'd just gone on down. God was dealing with it. But where did that start? I started about minis people ministering to the Lord. The old saints praying over you. Hello? I went down there. I got born again four days later. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Went and told Janie. She cried. She thought I was going to turn into a mama's boy. Because all the Christian boys she'd ever met were sissies. <laughs> Mama's boys. Hello. They weren't no manly Christians. Yeah, God got her too. My pastor Jensen tells a story. That next Wednesday night, he, he, he said, there was everybody coming out of the altar. About the time he said that, the back door was opened up. Janie came in. She came all the way down straight there. Never stopped walking. She walked right past me. and went, Whoa, whoa, there she is. <laughs> She went around there and got saved and got filled with the Holy Ghost same night. Four, sang four songs, four different languages. All that started because somebody was, see, people used to come pick her up and take her to the church of the first frozen chosen. There's enough gospel. If you, if you can get enough gospel, you can get, uh, give the Holy, all you got to do is give him a little bit. He can work on people. That older woman and man would go out of their way and pick her up and take her to church on Sundays because she grew up heathen. They pick her up, and it wasn't all the time. But they did it, they, but they go out of the way and pick her up and take her to church. They were serving the Lord. They were ministering to the Lord. Now her life has touched lives after life after life after life, because somebody was willing 
to serve the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. We have to learn to, what they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I'm going to say this. Waiting upon the Lord does entail praying and seeking God, but it also entails serving God. If you will serve God, you'll get energy. You will be infused with power from the Holy Ghost. What did he say to the disciples? He said, Take, go ye into Jerusalem and tarry ye there until what? You be endued with power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost has come on you. And then what did he say when the Holy Ghost comes on you? When that power comes on you? Did he say, get together and everybody do warring tongues against the devil? That was out about 20 years ago. Everybody was doing war in tongues. Yeah, if they spent more time praying in tongues and then going out and doing what they're supposed to do with all that, they would have gotten people saved. Screaming at the devil until they couldn't talk. Now you can't witness to anybody because you can't talk. That was good. Y'all say, well, praise God. Hallelujah. Janice, go ahead. Mm, yeah. They that wait on the Lord shall renew this. I'm telling you, when you begin to do things for God, there is a strength that comes to you. You'll run in that strength. He said that you shall mount up on wings as eagles. You'll run and not be weary. You'll walk and not faint. Why? Because you're ministering unto the Lord. You're serving the Lord. You're doing the Lord's will. You're not even putting gas in the car you don't drive. Don't throw anything at me. Hello? You only fill up a car unless you're you only fill up a car when you're driving it. You don't get renewed unless you're expending. You do not get renewed strength when you're not expending strength. You have to expend to get renewed. Amen. When you serve in the Lord, when you're giving your life to God, when you're giving yourself to him, you'll renew your strength. You'll mount up on wings as eagles. You can run and not be weary and walk and not faint. Well, I'm just too tired to come to church. Then you're going to stay tired. Go ahead, get the dirt balls out and shoot me. You know I'm right. I'm just too tired to go. What if, the, what if the worship team said that? And the pastor. You came in, where's, where's Nathan and Dick? They said they were too tired to be here tonight. Oh, okay, where's pastor? He said the same thing. Well, I got him, Cain. Uh-huh. And what's goose, good for the goose is good for the gander. We got up and came. Well, that's your job. No, 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 no. You better, you better change your opinion about that. Might be my calling, but it's not my job. I'm not here so I can get a paycheck. I'm here because I'm called to be here. And I'm called to be there, but you can be called to be there. Y'all know I'm talking right. Y'all mighty quiet out here. This was a Pentecostal church. Is that we have we still one? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna have to get your field again. Put some Holy Ghost run back in your feet. Hallelujah. I mean, glory to God. It wouldn't hurt us to have a little wildfire every once in a while. Brother Hagin said he'd rather have a wildfire and everything out of order than have a church order of a graveyard and no fire at all. Amen. Old Pentecostals, you get, they, they, get to, they got to the point they were scared of wildfire. And you know, somebody getting out of hand. You can just govern that fire. But if you're old wet wood, you can't do anything with you. Always putting, putting everything out. Thank you. All right. Tonight we're about to pick up because we went way, 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 way past. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, 
please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.